Howdy y'all. Thanks for joining me. I am going to be making Pico de Gallo today. And in order to make Pico, you're going to need a few things. You'll need lots of fresh, ripe, wonderful tomatoes. These are straight out of my garden. Beautiful tomatoes. We'll also be using Vidalia onion, some fresh jalapeno peppers, a lime, some cilantro, and some salt. So, let's get to chopping. We're going to start with the onion, I think. So, pico is a great way to use your tomatoes out of your garden if you've got a lot of tomatoes like I do. You need a way to use up your fresh tomatoes before they go bad. And this is great because pico can be used for so many different things. <clears throat> you can um, have it on chips like salsa. In fact, pico is sometimes called salsa fresco because it's made with all fresh ingredients and you can use it just like that just with some tortilla chips it's really good that way but you can use it for all kinds of things when it's made it is great to put in everything you can put it in soups and stews you can put it in all your Mexican dishes like when you're making tacos not only can you use it as a topping for your tacos you can also use it in your taco meat when you're cooking your taco meat you can put a couple of tablespoons of pico in there and it's delicious you can use it in scrambled eggs just everywhere it is just really good really versatile <clears throat> tomatoes onions and peppers if you like that taste you can put it in all kinds of stuff these are little white Vidalia onions. They're very sweet. They're really good. And I'm just doing them, you know, kind of small. You want them in kind of a small dice. You don't want great big pieces. But you don't want them just like totally minced either because then, you know, everything kind of gets a little mushy. You do want them to retain their individual little paste inside. And as sometimes in salsa, you know, you use canned tomatoes and sometimes even canned chilies and stuff like that. In pico, you would never use anything that's been processed or cooked because everything in this just depends on freshness. That's what makes it tastes so wonderful and to me that's what makes it so versatile in cooking because it's really just prepared ingredients you've just already done the, the prep work so as far as amounts it's really you know you can do equal amounts of tomatoes onions and jalapenos or you know if you like it more tomatoes or less onion you know you just ad adjust it to your taste Okay, now, now we're going to do the peppers. I got to put my gloves on for the peppers. If ever you're uh, cutting up peppers, it's really good to wear gloves if you have some. <clears throat> if you don't, be sure and clean your hands really, really good. Because if you touch your face or your eyes or something while you've got that pepper juice on your hands, you will really regret it. They are super hot. So I'm going to use my three and a half inch paring knife for these instead of the big chef knife. I was really glad to find these. The last time I went for jalapenos, they did not have them. I had to make do with serranos and they were really, really hot. They just weren't quite the same. So I'm taking out the ribs and the seeds. I don't want the ribs and the seeds in there because that's what makes a pepper hot and I don't want to get a really really hot bite of that. 
that white stuff right there <clears throat> that is the rib and it attaches all the seeds to the pepper and this is where most all of the heat is so if you get that all out of the pepper then they're just really flavorful and they're not they don't have so much heat that you can't enjoy the dish sometimes jalapenos are just too hot if they're like that soaking them in ice water cleaning them like this and getting all their seeds and the rib out of there and then soaking them in ice water will help to tame that heat a little bit you can also blanch them in a little bit of sugar water you can get a little water boiling and put a couple of spoons of sugar in there and then blanch your peppers in that and that will also tame the heat way there okay so now we're just going to chop up these peppers I'm going to switch back to my big chef's knife and then I'm just going to julienne them long ways and then come back for a small dice not really minced almost minced but but not minced if you go too small with it it just it's not pico anymore pico de gallo that <clears throat> is spanish it li literally translates as beak of rooster so it means the beak of the rooster and it is uh it's really good i'm going to use some of this when i make my drunk chicken i'll be using like a quarter cup of this pico to put in my chicken to extra spice it up so yeah just small dice I normally don't work with gloves they kind of make the peppers feel a little slick okay now, if you want it even hotter, you could take some of the seeds and put the seeds in there, you know, like purposefully put jalapeno seeds in your pico, and that would make it much hotter. This is a good topping for all kinds of stuff. Salads are really good, especially like a taco salad or something. They're, it's good in fajitas and tacos and burritos, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so now we'll do some tomatoes. And, you know, when you cut this part off of the tomato, like that, and a lot of times you'd be tempted to throw that away. Don't throw that away. You can use that. Whenever you, before I slice these, I'll show you. You just be sure and cut this part off. You know, and you discard the little stem, and the little part under the stem is not very good. So you discard that. But then you just, you give this a quick chop. And this is, you know, something that sometimes gets thrown away that really adds up when you're processing a lot of tomatoes and you are throwing away this much off each tomato. That's kind of a waste. So I suggest you cut the tops up and use them too. I've been chopping for a little while. I prepared some of this in advance, but I wanted to do a little bit just to show. Mainly preparing pico just means chopping up tomatoes and onions and chilies. That's what you're gonna be doing. And the tomatoes, I cut up a little bit larger because they kind of break down. You know how tomatoes do. They just, uh, They squish and break up a little bit. That's to be expected when you really mix them. Okay, so there's my tomatoes. And I think that's going to be enough. I'll set that one to the side. And what else? Okay, we're going to have a, a lime. I'm just going to cut that sucker in half. 
This is one of those beauties that don't have any seeds, so we'll have it just like that. And we want a little bit of cilantro. You want plenty, but you don't want really too much. I mean, I really like cilantro, so I go kind of heavy with the cilantro, but you can kind of overdo it with the cilantro if you're not careful. So just be sure and do it to your taste. If you really love cilantro like I do, go for it. I usually don't use the stems. They have a bit of a bitterness that I don't really love. So we've got all our ingredients prepared. And here's our nice bowl. First, we're going to put in the tomatoes. Then, we're going to put in the onion. Now, we'll put in the jalapenos. And the lovely cilantro. Okay, we're going to add some salt and put it on pour. I'm going to actually add probably, probably a good heavy teaspoon, maybe about a heavy teaspoon there of salt. And the juice of one large juicy lime. I always just, uh, there's all kinds of gadgets. To juice a lime with but I always just use a good old fork it works wonderfully I just stick the fork in there and rock it back and forth a little bit and all the juice comes out of course if it's seeded if it has seeds in it you'll have to be more careful you don't want lime seeds in your pico <coughs> So that's about it. Now we just mix to combine. And it's good if you let it sit for a little while. I'll mix this all up and I'll put it in a sealed container. I'll probably freeze a little bit of it. And we'll have some with chips. And I'll use some in my cooking. If you really get a taste for it, you wind up using it with everything. All meals. You'll have it with eggs in the morning with your breakfast and on your salad for lunch. It's good with a grilled chicken salad. It's real tasty. But personally, I like it best just like this. Just like this. On some tortilla chips. Just dip the tortilla chip in there and yum yum. Love this stuff. So that's how I make pico de gallo, sometimes called salsa fresco. And I highly recommend you try it and adjust the ingredients to your taste and enjoy. And thanks for joining me. And until next time, y'all be sweet.